Dr. Bill Wiley here with Dr. Daniel Pierre from Cleveland Eye Clinic and MVP. We're talking today about floaters. So many patients have those little things that float around in your vision that interfere with what you're trying to see. And some people think, is that normal, not normal? Does everybody get them? Yeah, that does look annoying. Okay. So the good news is, is that that floater is there and I see it, so you're not crazy, okay? It's, it's annoying, that's the good news. What are floaters and then more importantly, what are the treatments for floaters? So uh, Dr. Pierre, I know you are our laser floater expert and you're here to discuss what are floaters and how do we treat them and who's a candidate and what, you know, give us more. Sure, you know, I remember when I was a kid, like I was six years old and I was looking at like the bright skies like, Oh, what are those little things going around? Yeah. And I had no idea what they were, but yeah. you know, floaters are a normal part of the human experience. They're, you can notice them when you're a kid if you're nerdy enough like I was. <laughs> uh, but sometime later on in life, oftentimes people will notice a floater that gets a whole lot more major than that. Yes. Uh, usually sometime in your like 50s or 60s, uh, that's when people notice a, a particular kind of floater called a posterior vitreous detachment. And sometimes it can be sort of a scary experience because patients will notice like, oh, there's some flashes. And like, oh man, what are these floaters? What is this? Oh man, these are really annoying. Yeah. Most people after that occurs, like the flashes go away after a week or two, and then they learn how to ignore the floater and they carry on with life. Normal yeah. part of human experience. But for some people, some people have brains that are just detail oriented and yes. that can be a really good thing it which makes them really good at certain <laughs> activities and jobs in life but that same quality it can make these floaters really annoying and so they really drive them nuts yeah and so particularly for people who have floaters that are really annoying it can be really disruptive to activities you're trying to read drive you're trying to work and you've got this little thing right in front of your vision that's waving right. high that won't go away right. it's like that annoying neighbor yeah <laughs> Uh, and so they're trying to figure out what to do with it. And the conventional wisdom from eye doctors, if they go in and they tell their eye doctor, hey, I've got these floaters, what do I do about this? Most of the time doctors will say, well, just ignore it. It'll yeah. go away. It gets smaller, <laughs> Easier said than which done. is actually yeah. not true. It, right. They don't go away. <laughs> It, they seem to go away for most people because most people's brains learn how to ignore them automatically. Yeah, I kind of describe that. Like, if you ever have a crack on your windshield, when it first happens, it seems like that's all you see. A stone uh, you know, gets kicked up and hits your windshield. Now you have a crack. And for the next week, you're like, oh my gosh, it's right there. It's driving me crazy. And then a month or two later, somebody hops in your car and they're like, when did you get the crack in your windshield? And they're like, what crack? And they're like, the one right there. And exactly. so a lot of times your brain sort of tuned it out. And so the fancy word for that is called neuroadaptation. That is your brain gets used to it. It, yeah. it sort of tones it out automatically. Now, some brains are great at neuroadapting. Yeah. Some brains aren't. And some floaters are just too honking big to ignore. Yeah. So no matter how easygoing your brain is, Oh, that floater is really obnoxious and it's just bl literally blocking your vision. Sometimes when I look in a patient's eye and I will look at them and I will commiserate them because I'm trying to see the yeah. retina past it to evaluate their health. It's like, I can't see past their floater either. Yeah. And so th those are the patients where I say, hey, we need to, we need to address this. Okay. And a lot of people who have been told in the past that there's nothing to do with their floaters, they're so relieved to find that there are some doctors that will take this seriously and give me something that I can do about this. Right. The floaters that you might have seen as a little kid that you only see if you look at a blank wall or the sky or a uniform color, that would be, quote, normal, everybody has that type of floater. We call that vitreous cineresis. Okay. Now, inside your eye, there's this jelly called the vitreous humor. Yeah. And it's not just like a, a clear, pure jelly. It's sort of stringy. Okay. And as you live, the gel gets a little bit more liquid. Yeah. And so the strings can sort of move around each other and tangle. So that's the things that are catching the light, casting a little shadow. And that's why it seems to sort of swoosh around your vision yeah. whenever you move your eyes. You're trying to chase it and it's like constantly moving. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and so those are normal for most people, but most people can ignore them. They'll really pop out when there's a bright blank background, say on a sunny day, looking at the blue sky, looking at a white wall in the office, or like your glowing white computer screen with yeah. the background. Okay. So those are sort of normal. Most people have something like that. The abnormal fl floater, at a certain age, they become more 
God. Yeah, sometime in your like 50s or 60s, yeah. the vitreous, this, which is the jelly, it sort of shrinks up and it peels off the back wall of the eye, the retina. Okay. And when it peels off, there's a little connector piece that unplugs. And that little connector piece dangles and okay. can move around. And it's a little chunkier than the regular synoretic tangles yes. that, that are normal. And if it's casting a shadow, that's that little black spot or a speck. So people okay. will describe, oh, I see like a bat or a cat or yeah. a rat or a gnat or yeah. whatever, like sort of moving around over here and they look and then it, there's nothing there. Yeah. And PVD usually is accompanied by flashes because when it's pulling off the back of the eye, it tugs on the nerve. Right. And when the nerve discharges, you see a flash that isn't there. Okay. Uh, it's and not actually a flash of light, but it's tugging on the nerve. You ever, have you ever hit your funny bone in your arm? You know, you tickle the nerve down here and you, oh man, in my hand it feels weird, like hot right. and, and tingly. You're not actually touching anything with your hand, but the nerve has been stimulated. Okay. And so you're feeling something down there. Same idea inside the eye. Yeah. Something tugs on the retina and so it discharges and you see a flash that's not there. Once the f that process is done peeling off, there's no more tugging and that's why the flashes go away. I see. However, the floater persists. Okay. And so those are the ones that can be really obnoxious there. And those are the ones that are usually a good candidate for the YAG vitrolysis procedure. Let's say you're 65 years old, you have this sudden flashing light, mm -hmm. you see a floater, and you might say, okay, this is sort of normal, it's a process. Is there anything to worry about or what are we worried about? That's yeah. actually a really good question. There, most people, this, this process happens, they don't even realize it, they don't see the doctor and they end up being somehow okay and that's fine and dandy, but I'd rather trust skill than luck, right? right. Yeah. So sometimes when this process happens and you develop floaters and flashes for the first time, it's always best to go and see the doctor first. Right. And because when it's peeling off, it could pull a tear in the retina. And okay. if that happens, that can lead to a dangerous situation where fluid gets underneath there and then the retina detaches. Now the symptom that will cause will be like, you'll see this curtain of vision loss coming from the side that blocks your vision and doesn't go away. That always needs to be ha handled immediately. Yes. Okay. That's an emergency that uh, we usually say call the eye doctor because if you go to the emergency the room, they're just gonna send you to see the eye doctor. Right, so call your eye doctor if you see that dark curtain that doesn't go away. Yeah, that oh. could be a retinal detachment. That's bad. Vitreous detachment, annoying. Retinal detachment, bad. Okay. And that needs to be addressed right away. When it comes to the onset of the floater, yes. it's always good to get checked out because you might not notice that curtain of vision loss, but there might be a little tear that starts that. Okay. So anytime you develop a floater, you should always go get checked out right away. And then what the eye doctor will do is do a dilated eye exam, Confirm that, they, okay, yeah, I see that floater. Look in their peripheral retina to make sure there's yeah. no tears or collateral damage that can lead to a retinal detachment. And then they always are gonna check you between six and eight weeks later, just to make sure that something hasn't progressed into a tear. Got it. Now, after that two month period, if you're still noticing that floater, that might mean that your brain just is not neuro adapting or right. ignoring that floater. And that might be a good time to address, okay, what should we do to get rid of this thing? If it's pesky enough to interrupt with reading yeah. or working or driving, you know, we need people to function. And if it becomes visually significant, then the insurance yeah. companies will pay for this. Great. And so let's talk about, you've got a floater. It's just a normal floater, no retinal tear or anything like that. Uh, it's bothersome. It's interfering with vision. And now you want to have a treatment. Let's talk about sort of probably two main treatments, or maybe I suppose three. Yeah. One is just sort of let it be, give it time. Maybe it goes yeah. away, maybe you get used to it. You've tried that. And we always do that for two yes. months first anyway. Okay, so you try that, it's still there. Now you want to explore one of a couple treatments. Sure. Uh, so not all floaters are created equal. Some yeah. do great with a laser. Some do better with actually being surgically vacuumed out of the eye, and that's okay. called pars plana vitrectomy. Now that's been around for a long time, uh, and it's a much better procedure now than it was even like 15 years ago. Right. Uh, they use smaller gauge instrumentation, it's safer, yes. and um, 
I think the, the last time I talked to one of my retina friends, they said there's one in 650 chance of something really seriously going wrong with that procedure. Okay. So it's a great safe procedure, but it, it is a surgery that goes inside the eye. And what they do there is they actually evacuate the floater out of the eye. So okay? you're fully removing it. So it's completely more removing it, replacing it with clear fluid yes. that your body cycles there from, from then on. So it's gone and it stays gone forever, completely out of the eye. So you kind of like looking at those two treatments, a laser would be less invasive, but maybe not quite as complete. Yeah, it attractive. really depends on the floater type. Yes. Um, there are some floaters like there's these cloudy, like sort of fibrillar tangles there yes. that, you know, I can turn the laser up to 11 and shoot it right. a thousand times and it doesn't do anything <laughs> at all. Okay. So I can brag about good success with the YAG vitrolysis yeah. procedure uh, because I'm very picky about who's a good candidate right. and who's not. Okay. And so when a patient comes to see me, uh, you know, I, I've, I have a little handout that, that sort of preps them for, okay, what to expect out of the different kinds of floaters. Right. And it might do better with surgery, might do better with the laser. Uh, but I will tell when I look inside their eye, it will tell me what it's good for. Yeah. And it's, it's usually very easy for me to tell. So I'll look inside their eye and I'll see, okay, a, a big cloudy area that is all this fibrous tangle there. Okay. I know that the laser is not going to do a good job with that one, so I'll send them along to my friend, the retina specialist, and they'll talk to them about doing the actual surgery to evacuate that out. Got it. But if it's the Weiss ring, that little connector piece that I was talking about before that's peeled off and sort of dangling there, those are usually a really good candidate to be broken up by the laser. So what the laser does, I mean, when I say laser, people yeah. think of like Star Wars right. or the Asteroids video game from like 1983. <laughs> and you know what? They're exactly right. It is very similar to that. I'm using a very small laser and it's causing a very tiny micro explosion inside the eye, which kind of sounds scary, right. except for it's so utterly controlled. Yeah. And so I can be extremely precise and I want to blow things up. I yeah. want to blow up that tiny floater. That's what makes it goes away. Yeah. I just have to be very precise to not damage anything else inside right. the eye. Like I've got to make sure that that is far enough away from the retina. If it's far enough away from the retina, then it's in the safe zone and I can easily get that safe. So that's what you're going to look for. You're going to see, is it safe? Is it the right kind of floater? That's right. Is it in the right spot? Can it easily be removed or treated with a laser? Right. Or is it going to be something else? And I'll talk with the patient about like, okay, what are the risks and benefits of yeah. each method? Would yeah. this method be okay for you? Would this method be okay for you? Sometimes people are more complex than, uh, than they right. realize, and they might have more than one kind of floater in there. And I'll say, well, wh which symptom is bothering you more? Because some floaters tend, the, the chunky floaters yeah. that are more like a spot, those tend to be the ones that correlate with the Weiss ring mass that are sure. good candidates. The ones that are sort of like big cloudy areas, those tend to be more the like fibrous ones that need the surgery to get out of there. Okay. But you can't always correlate the symptom with the exact kind of floater, so it's still good to have us take a look at it. So Dr. Pierre, let's talk about a scenario. I have a patient that really wasn't noticing floaters and has cataract surgery. And now a week after cataract surgery, they say, you know what, doc, my vision's much better, but now I see this floater in my vision. Tell me about that. And so is there a cause and effect or something else going on? That's so, actually a really common scenario. Yeah. And you know, the cataract surgery is done way in the front of the eye. Yes. The floater lives way in the back of the eye. So, you know, I know that the front and the, uh, the back of the eye are only an inch apart. Right. But, uh, you know, in, in microsurgery <laughs> terms, that's a long, long way. Yeah. So the two actually usually have nothing to do with each other. But the reason why the patients notice floaters after cataract surgery is because now they don't have anywhere to hide. So remember the cataract is yes. the lens, so it's, it's cloudy. And so if you've got a floater back there behind a cloudy lens, it's easy for it to hide. So it's yes. easier for patients not to notice it. But then you get that cataract out of there, you get a brand new lens, everything's clearer and yeah. brighter and the quality is so much higher. And now you can notice lots of things you didn't notice before. Yeah. Sometimes patients after cataract surgery is like, hey, where'd these wrinkles come from? It's like, right. no, no, that wasn't me. I swear you had right. those before, but you can see them now. Yes. Or you might have uh, you know, somebody say, hey, now I have to clean my house har harder because like, I'm seeing all the little dirt and grime. Same thing with the floaters. 
oh, that, I got this floater now. Yeah. And oh, yeah, actually, you know, it's there. It's just it was hiding behind the yeah. cataract. Now it has nowhere to hide, and it's been it's been exposed. Got it. And so it's no surprise if that happens after cataract surgery. And then you know what we do? The same neuro adaptation yes. process. Give it just a month or two. See if your brain adapts to that. And most of the time it does. If it doesn't, okay, let's go ahead and we'll talk about that simple laser procedure to eliminate that floater symptom. Great. And we'll, let's talk about one other scenario similar on the subject, subject of cataract surgery. You know, when, with cataract, we remove the foggy lens, we put a new lens inside the eye, and I tell my patients that one time in the life of that new lens, a little scar tissue grows on the back of the mm -hmm, lens, mm -hmm. and when that occurs, the vision drops down again, and what we do is what's called a YAG laser, same laser that we use a for YAG other capsulotomy. Yes. Yeah, so the YAG yeah. vitrolysis, same laser, different procedure. Yeah, different, same laser, different procedure, so we're going to use that YAG capsulotomy laser to basically break open that membrane to now increase the vision. However, sometimes patients do notice some floaters after that. Maybe the mm -hmm. same scenario mm -hmm. where now they're harder to hide, mm -hmm. but can there be some cause and effect with that capsulotomy? What's your yeah. take on that? Yeah. So when we do the YAG capsulotomy procedure, right. we're opening up that little film be, that's it's basically your, your own lens capsule yes. uh, that is sh sort of shrunk wrapped down around the lens, holds it nice and tight in there, which is what we want. But again, you've seen shrink wrap that's like a little bit wrinkly. And if you're looking through that, that can be sort of annoying. So we use the laser to basically open up the capsule and, let, and push that debris off to the side. Sometimes that debris after the YAG capsulotomy, yes. it's supposed to shrink off to the side and it sort of crumple up and never be noticed again. Right. Sometimes you can get little pieces of that, that debris that sort of float around, especially if you're looking around, look down, look up, you see it yeah. sort of wave up and then it sort of sinks down. Yes. Or it might be connected by a little dangling chad. Yes. Uh, and, so, uh, <laughs> and so what we do with the laser there is we can push that off to the side even more. So that's not an uncommon scenario, but it's very easy to take care of that. So if you have, a, if you have that scenario, had a YAG laser after cataract surgery and now you have floaters, and they don't go away, yeah. you, it's easy treatment for you to break that apart. We can like just that. basically loosen up yeah. the vitreous and shove it off to the side so it's even less annoying. Any final sort of closing remarks? This procedure is not very common, and here's why. The laser for it is honestly, it's a little expensive. So yeah. a lot of the doctors don't offer this. We do because we think that this is a great procedure and it is a great minimally invasive option for a lot of people that can get by without yeah. surgery. Yeah, and so um, it takes some expertise to do it and there's not many doctors that offer it. I think in the whole state of Ohio, I think there's maybe only like four or five of us that do it. So it's not uncommon for me to get people coming from Pennsylvania or Indiana yeah. or Michigan. Uh, I had a patient flying from Iceland to see me for That's this amazing. one. Yeah. Uh, and people are really, really happy when they have this done because it's something easy that we can do to get rid of a really yeah. annoying symptom and insurance pays for it. And it's, it's a huge blessing to a lot of people. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I seem to remember for most of my career, we're so used to just saying, sorry, there is no treatment for floaters. And I think a lot of doctors are used to saying that. Now, thank, thankfully, we have a great treatment, multiple treatments. So there yeah. are treatments for floaters. So it's great to have this new technology and have the ability to treat something that truly is bothersome. And, yeah, you know, the, the, yeah. Old, uh, the old doctrine was, you know, never <laughs> use a laser on these. But that, yeah. was, that was doctrine from like, <laughs> three decades ago. Right. Now, I don't blame some eye doctors for not being all up on the new technology. Yeah. So your eye doctor, don't blame them if they are sort of surprised to hear about this <laughs> because, you know, well, we're at the Cleveland Eye Clinic. We yeah. like cutting edge stuff. Right. That's what we do. And so we've been doing this. I've been doing this for eight years now. That's awesome. And uh, we've had really, really good results again. Again, I can, I can sort of brag about good results yeah. because we're very picky. And if you're not a good candidate for the floater, then we get you over to our retina specialist and they can take right. care of it. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, again, if you have new floaters, make sure you reach out to your eye doctor. There are some important considerations 
when diagnosed with floaters. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Dr. Pierre, for your expertise in this great field and your expertise in treating these floaters. Any last minute words? Yeah, it's a privilege yeah. to talk about this because again, this is a procedure that's a great procedure. It's just that we got to be real picky about yeah. who's a good candidate and who's not. And that's why it's such a great procedure right. because we can really do a lot of good with a very simple procedure that gets paid for by insurance.